Today, we are going to be naming the ionic compound ZnS. Now we have two different elements here. We have Zn, which is zinc, and we have S, which is sulfur. Let's just see where they are on the periodic table. So the zinc is over here. It's the last element on this little side over here, part of the transition metals. And it's a transition metal, so it's a metal. Sulfur is right below oxygen on the periodic table, somewhere over here. And that's nonmetal territory. So sulfur is always going to be a nonmetal. Now in this case, the ionic compound is between a metal and a nonmetal. So let's just write it out. The metal name, since it's said first, always comes first, right? And that name always stays the same. So Zn on the periodic table, that's zinc. So that's easy. It's going to stay zinc. And then the sulfur, which is the nonmetal, that name always gets the I-D-E ending. So it was sulfur, but now we just have to change it into the I-D-E ending. So it'd be sulfide. Get rid of the U-R and just put a I-D-E. Okay. Now, since it's ionic, we just have to do a double check to make sure that we need a Roman numeral. But here is a trick. Well, not really a trick, but an exception. Star up zinc. Even though zinc is a, you know, it's part of the transition metals, it's in this block, this only has one charge. Zinc will always, always, always have a plus one charge. It does not transition from one state to another. So since we know that the zinc will always have a plus one, we don't have to write in Roman numerals what the charge is. So in this case, we do not need a Roman numeral, and we are done. So ZNS, just zinc sulfide. Hopefully this helped, guys. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe if you would like to, and let me know how you guys are doing, all right? Good luck on all your tests and quizzes, and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.